Hello friends, welcome back to another exciting video. Today we'll see how to install DBT, set up your first project, and create a DBT model. So, without further ado, let's dive right in and get started. Python is a prerequisite for using DBT, so make sure to download it from python.org and install it on your system. Please select this checkbox during the installation process. This will automatically add the Python installation directory to your system's path variable. To verify that Python is working correctly, open the command prompt and use the Python version command. Cool. Let's now download and install Visual Studio Code, the most powerful and widely used IDE in the industry. After installing VS Code, please proceed to install the Python and DBT extensions one after another. As a best practice, please choose extensions with high downloads and ratings. Please open the terminal and cd to the path where you want to set up your first project. Create a Python virtual environment. Activate the virtual environment created. Let's install dbt with the pip install dbt-data platform command. For instance, if you are using Snowflake, run pip install dbt snowflake. Before we initialize our first project, we should create a .dbt folder in the user home directory. You can either do it over here with this make directory command or navigate to the home directory using percent user profile percent and create the folder. This is the default folder where dbt will create and maintain the profile.yaml, one of the important dbt configuration files where database connection details and user credentials are stored. We are ready to initialize our first dbt project using the dbt init command. Please follow the on-screen instructions and respond to the prompts that appear. Now, let's navigate to the project that was just created. The dbt init command has created all these folder structures and the important configuration files. The file we want to focus on is the dbt underscore project.yaml. It contains important information such as the project name, version, and most notably, the target database profile. Additionally, you'll find the profiles.yaml file in your home directory. This file stores the database connection details, which you supplied during the dbt init process. At this point, it's a good idea to verify the connectivity between dbt and your data platform using the dbt debug command. Great, connection works as expected. Next, we'll move forward to creating our first dbt model. In the context of dbt, a model refers to a SQL query that is designed to carry out a particular transformation task on your data platform. This ER diagram represents an order management system, a project in the retail domain. We'll explore more about this business and data model in our upcoming sessions. However, for now, our focus will be on the customers and orders. Using these two tables, let's attempt to identify customers who have placed a larger number of orders. As mentioned earlier, dbt models predominantly consist of SQL statements. 
So, let's begin by writing a select query that fulfills our requirement. We could join the customers and orders tables and aggregate the results using the group by clause. It works. However, DBT makes extensive use of common table expressions or CTEs for improved readability and modularity, so you must understand how to write SQL queries using CTEs. CTEs act as temporary tables that are accessible only within the same query and are discarded after the query execution. To use a CTE, simply prefix with CTE name as to your select statement. Using CTEs provides an abstraction of the underlying complex logic, resulting in a more readable and modular query. Let's create our first model called CustomerOrders.SQL with the query that we've just framed. Please save the model once you are done. Now, we are ready to execute our first model. Issue the dbt run command in the terminal. This command references the dbtproject.yaml file and profile.yaml file for project and connection details respectively and executes the models in the project. If the execution is successful, you'll see that a view with the same name as the model file has been created. Let's verify the object created in Snowflake. All working well as expected. The business users can now effortlessly utilize their preferred reporting tools like Power BI to access this data. Before we wrap up, there is one final point worth mentioning. The default materialization for DBT models is a view, but it can be configured or changed to the table either at the dbtproject.yaml file or at the model file itself. Let's rerun the project after this change. As expected, the model has been successfully created as a table this time. That's all for today. In our next video, we'll take a deep dive into DBT models, create dependencies between them, and much more. So please stay tuned for more exiting videos, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your comments. Thanks for watching.